In this section, we're going to talk about volatility and how to measure it. Now, at first blush, you might be thinking, oh, volatility, that's, that's bad, right? Bad, bad, not good. And actually for traders, the volatility can be actually very good. Uh, really helps separate you from the crowd as far as using indicators and different things. And for some traders, they seek out volatility. They seek out securities that are very volatile and um, things like technology stocks or cryptocurrency or whatever. So if you like volatility or you'll like this lessons, and if you don't like volatility, you're going to actually understand a lot better and understand how you can uh, uh, use it to your advantage and make it a little more comfortable with it. So what is volatility first off? Well, it's simply a measure of price variation. You know, highs and lows, prices are going up and down all day long. You know, and all volatility does is measure how much that's happening and how fast that might be happening. So the high and low over a period of time or the variation from a fixed measure gives you a feel for volatility. So this is my fixed measure and I have a security that just trades a little bit above and a little below that fixed measure, less, more, less volatile or lower volatility. Higher volatility would mean that I have this fixed measure and we're going to learn about these indicators that we'll use and the fixed measures that they use, um, would have much bigger swings. So much bigger swings in price both up and down. Uh, and higher volatility, basically what that means is that there's, there's really higher risk, but also higher reward too. Higher risk that maybe you, you didn't make the right choice or didn't turn out the way you thought it would and you have a losing, a losing trade. But higher reward too, where there might be more potential uh, in, within those trades as far as more price variation, you know, bigger, bigger opportunities for profit in more volatile stocks. And so that's why some, uh, in securities, that's why some traders really like more volatile securities. They want that potential for more reward. There's more possible outcomes in a more volatile security than one that's less volatile. So uh, there's no right or wrong as far as you, you know, volatility. It's, it just kind of is. And how you approach it might be the difference and how you apply the indicators is what will be a difference between different traders. And so a change in volatility really is implying a change in the expected price range to come. You know, what's that price range going to look like coming forward? Very important for us to know. So, uh, so that's a good thing that we, we want to find that out. And volatility indicators help us with it. So a non-volatile security uh, delivers a narrower range of possible outcomes than one that's a more volatile security. Right, that makes sense, right? And thus again, a typical, you know, a typical technology stock or a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is generally more volatile than something that's, you know, like a utility stock that has very little variations in price. So the main reason to look at volatility is to reflect the changing probability of a gain or loss. What is the what is the possible outcomes that I if I make a trade that I'm going to have a gain, and what is the chances I may have a loss, and I can I you know, look at volatility in a way to kind of make this work in my favor. And the good news is you can, and that's what we're going to learn about up in these upcoming lessons. So let's think about for one second here, though, is how does it arise? Where does volatility come from? And you can really think of volatility as crowd sentiment, right? So, you know, how, what does the crowd think? What does the other traders think? So volatility rises when traders get excited about a new move. Maybe it's a new event that caused a new move. There's something in the news that is causing something to happen. And the price starts going up to new highs or possibly, depending if it's bad news, might be going to new, new lows. Either way, traders are taking notice. They might be excited, <laughs> maybe disappointed. But either way, the crowd is getting involved and they're noticing. And so it's causing this volatility, this price range, uh, this wider price range. So the start of a new move is when you see higher price highs and lower lows, right? So you've got volatility. When a trend starts to establish, you're going to look at for higher highs and lower lows, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. And so volatility can really kind of give us an indication on when that move might be happening. So volatility, and this is the key part, volatility tends to be abnormally low just before a turning point and abnormally high at the first big thrust of a new trend. You know, it's always, nothing is 100% perfect. There's always noise and, you know, false signals and things in the market. But if you think about it, if, it's, if, if we're looking at volatility measures and the volume is low, or excuse me, the volatility is low, uh, just it might be indicating that there's a, a turning point coming. So we're looking at a turning point. And if it's abnormally high, that means, okay, people got excited. Now the new trend is not, it's not a turning point now. Now the trend is getting more firmly established. The first big thrust of a new trend happening. And that's where volatility can, you know, we can see these volatility measures indicating that. So if you think about it, where it's helping, volatility is helping us to identify turning points and 
uh, establishing strong trends. Two really important things I think we'd want to know, right? So the volatility measures can be very, very helpful in a lot of ways. Also, when you think of volatility, think about your trading style. And then you don't have to decide that now. The, the, your trading style will develop as you start doing trades, you do paper trading in practice. You'll just kind of develop into that. But if you have a feel for what your trading style might be, that may be how you might use volatility measures too. So trading style matters with volatility in terms of how you look at it. How do you look at risk and reward? Are you willing to take on more risk for a more reward? Uh, thus, you'd want more volatility, for example. Also, the time frame. You know, longer time frames will tend to smooth out uh, volatility, right? You have, you, know, you have more time to kind of base these measures on versus, let's say, a very short time frame. And then the focus of your investments, as we mentioned, you know, certain things like uh, cr technology, cryptocurrency stocks attract people who are comfortable with and like volatility. So it uh, doesn't mean you can't trade in those areas, not at all, but uh, just understand you're gonna be in a more volatile area than let's say in other areas. And there's trading mechanics we can actually use to help us with volatility too. So you know, we can put in like a market order, not a market order, but a, a, an order, like what is called a stop loss order or stop loss level setting. So we can kind of reduce our losses. So if you're like, I want that reward, but I'd like to reduce my risk a little bit, you can actually use some trading mechanics that we'll learn about later in the course on how to do that to you know, put in the correct order to help reduce that uh, downside risk and still give you a good chance at upside reward. So that gets into the trading you know, mechanics part coming up later in the course. All right, so let's learn even more about volatility and start talking about like what types or degrees of volatility we might be experiencing out here and some indicators that we can use that are specific to volatility, which is really looking at market sentiment and looking for those turnaround opportunities and those opportunities that, oh, a trend is established and we see that first thrust because we see an increase in volatility. And turn volatility to a good thing.